What is going on everyone? This is Andrew O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is February 2nd, 2021. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this content and I will continue to make it for you. Today we're going to be talking about some quick housekeeping items related to the service I'm launching. We'll go through the price action in the indices. We'll go under the hood and check out our sectors and style factors as we always do. Then we'll take a look at some trades that I took. Oh my lord, I took so many trades today. So you're going to see I went crazy. And then we'll wrap up with some options order flow. But before we jump in, our risk disclaimer. Nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan, your own risk parameters. And last, but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades. All right, so let's jump right in. So we have our market recap right here. Quick housekeeping. So I posted this earlier today. Team, which do you prefer, Slack or Discord? I am actually most familiar with Slack. I've used it, you know, in the past for work. Um, I used it in my prior engagement and I helped set up the Slack. Um, but surprisingly, you know, I got 71 responses. Most people actually prefer Discord. And the funny thing is like, I'm more familiar with Slack, um, but Slack is actually more costly. It's like eight bucks per person. I started, mess I started messing around with Discord today and I spun up, you know, a server for Pristine Capital. It looks very similar. So as of this moment, you know, given we had more votes for Discord, I'm going to be spinning up a Discord. I just have to hook it up to Twitter. You know, I did some quick searching. It should be pretty straightforward. So the Discord server should be done, you know, pretty much by tonight. And then I'm going to be working with the developer, you know, throughout the week on, you know, just fixing up the website, um, accepting payments, you know, all that stuff. And then we should be good to launch because I have had a couple people reaching out, um, you know, essentially saying like, hey, hey, how can we still continue to follow your work? So I want to get this spun up, you know, as quickly as possible. So please, you know, thank you for being patient with me. And I want to get it spun up, you know, really quickly. That way I can continue to engage with you guys, you know, throughout the trading day, giving out, you know, my real time trades, uh, market color, you know, all that good stuff. So that is our housekeeping item. Let's jump into these indices right here. So we had the S&P 500 up 1.41% today. We had the NASDAQ QQQ up 1.63%. We had the IWM small caps up 1.42%. And we had the Dow Jones up 1.59%. So you can see we got really strong follow through today. So if we're looking at our S&P 500, I thought, you know, I, I thought things would resolve to the upside, you know, as I've been talking about in my videos, but I thought it was going to be much more of a struggle, to be honest. Like, I thought maybe today, you know, we might approach this point of control here and maybe like fall off a little bit, you know, do some back testing and maybe, you know, then move higher or whatever. We pretty much just blasted right through the entire monthly value area. And that to me shows strength. So now we're above the 50-day simple moving average. We're above the monthly point of control. We're above the short-term moving averages, above the 20-day simple moving average. So this market, to me, looks like it wants to go higher. So we have the prior highs, and you know, around like 38.54. And at this moment, I feel like we are in a pretty unique setup where, to me, everything looks really bullish. Like, I know... I saw a bunch of people today online, you know, that I guess they're kind of like bearish on the markets, you know, which is fine. Everybody goes about things differently. And I saw a bunch of people saying like, hey, if you're looking to do a counter trend short or like if you're looking to short, you know, this is the time. For me, I am just so like full speed ahead on the bullish side. You know, of course, I'll make adjustments if I need to. But in my opinion, you know, we had our GameStop financial crisis last week. And we had all of that hedge fund degrossing. And, you know, hedge funds, investors really just puking up their their books, you know, really quickly. So, like, for me, if we had had another really big down day, I likely would have had to puke up some exposure. 
you know, just to be honest, just to keep my risk in check. So for me, the way I see it is like, if you were going to puke, most likely you puked either on this red candle or this red candle here. Once that selling pressure abates and those sellers are no longer there, you know, then you sort of get like, okay, everyone who is going to sell over this GameStop thing is out of the way. So let's see what happens next. This really strong reaction to me is like, all right, here we go. In just two days, we literally reclaimed like 90% of the losses. You know, to me, it's like, if you didn't puke down here, you know, why would you be puking up here? Like, I just don't really get it. And then we have options expiration coming up. Um, and about at this point, it's like two and a half weeks. So I do think we're going to have those really supportive, you know, Vana flows, charm flows, the whole nine. And I just think given that this volatility event is behind us, unless something new comes up, that could always happen. I could definitely be proven wrong on this. You know, I'm pretty much expecting like making new highs, you know, getting to that 4,000 mark. And that's really like what I'm playing for. Um and yeah, I'm very open to being wrong on that. I probably am since I'm wrong 100% of the time. But yeah, that's how I'm positioned right now. So we have the the Qs up here. And I'll just run through these other indices, you know, really quickly. So I think we said a lot for the ES. Qs looking very similar. The Qs actually broke out above the monthly value where you're high. So looking really strong. And of course, you're going to have some people taking some profits off the top. Just think about it. If you were like really strong and you were one of those people that, you know, we had this long lower wick right here. If you're one of the people that bought in the wick. Like say you bought at like 313 or 314, 315 on the queues. And you get a two day move up to 327. You know, it does not surprise me that there's going to be some players that take profits. Like good on them. Um, but I just think like at this point, like any dip that we get, you know, to me, I'm probably just going to be buying on that weakness. So we have the Qs. We have the IWM. IWM is not showing that same relative strength that it was before. You know, coming out of the election, the IWM was super, super strong. And you can see this, you know, crazy uptrend. But that being said, it's above the monthly point of control, you know, decisively. It's above all the key moving averages, so we'll have to see how this one, you know, reacts at the monthly value area high as well. And then the Dow Jones, let's take a look. The Dow Jones lagging behind the pack. Yeah, you can see the Dow Jones, even that one was, you know, pretty strong today. But it tagged the 20-day simple moving average and rolled over. Yeah, like when you look at the components of the Dow, they're just not very strong. Like they're not really very strong companies. They don't have these like superior technology business models where you just have fantastic margins. And yeah, it doesn't surprise me that as we bounce back, the Dow is kind of like the slowest to do that. Yeah, still moving to the upside, so we'll have to see what happens. Let's dig into our sectors and style factors here. All right, so if you look here, you know, another really nice bounce day. So we had the cannabis stocks that have once again returned to the top slot in terms of momentum. We had the XRT, you know, GameStop and all those short inch, high short interest stocks pretty much came back to reality. Um, so those are down. It was kind of, it was getting almost like nauseating how much everybody was talking about that story last week and all that stuff. I mean... With the way the news cycle and the media cycle works, you know, it'll probably be like nobody talking about it in a couple days. But yeah, for a while it was like, you know, all I would hear, I would have people reaching out to me about like these high short interest stocks. So I'm glad that saga is behind us. But yeah, so we had KWeb. I have my 90 by 95 by 100 butterfly on in KWeb looking pretty strong. These Chinese internet names. We had bounce back in the ARC funds, which were super weak during the degrossing. You can see the solar energy stocks. It looks like they're making a bit of a comeback here up 4.88%. That's such a strong group. So it's one of those things where, you know, when everybody's degrossing, everybody owns solar energy because it's been so strong. So we got, you know, this sort of like opportunity where there was some big weakness in solar energy. So that was where I added to my end phase position. 
because I think Enphase is a leader in that space. You know, now we're getting paid on that, which is good. Um, XLF, I actually took a trade um, in one of these banks today, so I'll talk about that shortly. But yeah, everything's looking pretty strong. Gold miners were weak. That silver, you know, the silver squeeze sort of ended up being, you know, you know, not really a thing. Silver kind of just, you know, uh, rolled right back over after it had that really, you know, strong move to the upside. So yeah, those are our sectors. In terms of our style factors, you can see here we had the momentum style factor up 2.04%. We had high beta, which was strong as well, up 1.97%. These cyclicals are still not really all that strong, which is surprising to me because you know, we, we are in the midst of a vaccine rollout to a deadly pandemic. So I would think these cyclicals would be moving, but you know, I guess not. So I'll have to see what happens there. And then you can see high div, low vol was the worst performing style factor. So to me, that shows me like, okay, people are rotating out of that style factor and they're getting into more risk on style factors. Oh my gosh. Okay, so for... You know my trades today I took so many trades and like I don't ever I don't think and this is probably gonna make me wrong on this but I don't think I've ever seen like a market set up like this where I'm like you know I always think in terms of probabilities so for me it's like if I have like a 55% hunch you know that something's gonna happen you know for me that's like oh my gosh those odds are amazing because usually for me, like if I think something's like a 51% opportunity, that's like, okay, got to apply some capital to it. So I just think like given, you know, this uh, sell-off like degrossing event that we just had, where we are in the cycle in terms of OPEX, like I just really like, uh, you know, a lot of these companies here. So as you can see, yes, yeah, so I'll start off with the trade that I took off today, which is Big C. If you listen to my video yesterday, you know that I took off half the position because it really just wasn't doing what I wanted it to, and it just wasn't showing enough relative strength. So Big C, I ended up taking off today. The remainder of my calls took them off for about maybe like a 10% gain, the rest of the position. So nothing too crazy. Funny enough, though, I took them off, you know, down here somewhere, like when... uh big commerce was down like three or four percent on the day it actually looks like those dip buyers you know came right back into the stock so if this thing shows strength tomorrow you know i have absolutely no shame i have no problem just jumping right back into those calls if it looks like this stock's going to make a move to the upside but i was trying to allocate to the relative strength today so i took this one off in the morning tesla this one was an odyssey today. So I posted about Tesla, you know, a little bit earlier in the morning today. Yeah, I set an alert right here. But essentially, you know, I came into the trading day. It was maybe like 9.40 or 9, like, you know, super early. Like in the first couple minutes of trading, I saw a big call buyer hit the tape in Tesla. And I just saw what it was doing. I was like, okay, it's decisively above this uh, monthly uh, point of control so I was like it's Tesla like why would I not try for a bullish trade so I took actually the February 5th um, I believe I took like the 867 and a half calls so like a little bit in the money and I ended up scalping those calls I targeted this monthly value area high and I was pretty much sitting at my machine like all right let's see you know if it wants to make this move we tagged that level and I just immediately closed out. Um, so I made like a quick like 25 or 30% on the position. Um, and that was sort of like a confidence boost in the morning. I was like, all right, let's go. Um, so traded Tesla, just a really quick, you know, day trade. What are my other ones on here? Yeah, JP Morgan, this one. I put on a butterfly in JP Morgan. So I have my K-Web butterfly. I also have my JP Morgan butterfly now. And I was looking at this and I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, JP Morgan's jumping back into this monthly value area. It's had a pretty significant sell-off. So you can see it went all the way from 142, spot 75, 
all the way down here in like the high 120s. And I see like, okay, we're decisively in this monthly value area. You can see here we triggered a bullish 80% rule, which pretty much just means, you know, if you make it back in that value area, there's, you know, a high likelihood that you end up testing the other side of value. So I was like, you know what, this is kind of perfect. So I ended up going with the 135, 142, um, 149 butterfly. So it's a pretty aggressive butterfly because, you know, the lowest strike is a little bit out of the money, meaning JPM is going to have to do some work to get into uh, pretty much like my profit zone. And then it's really targeting the top of this monthly value. And I bought it for February 19th, this options expiration. So we'll see what happens. I believe I paid like a dollar 48 for it. And there's seven dollars of potential profit. So we'll see, it's a low probability of success trade, um, but it's also a high payout trade. You know, so we'll see what happens. Um, JPM, I also put on, yeah, so I did a bunch. I put on a Chewy trade today. Um, and for Chewy, I sort of had a free roll from my Tesla trade. So what I did was I put on the February 19th 100 strike Chewy calls and I could just see, like, it looks like there's someone buying Chewy at this 98 level. Because you can see, like, it keeps wicking out. And there's someone supporting this stock every time it dips to about 98. And it looks like, you know, they're just accumulating the stock very patiently. So I want to see if we do get a move higher. I really like the way the chart looks. Where you can see Chewy does this a lot. Where it'll correct this 20-day, shake some people out. And then it takes that next leg up. You know, I'm sort of seeing, you know, that same pattern developing. So we'll see. That was sort of like a free roll trade. We'll see if it amounts to anything. Um, Arc G, I also took an additional. I added more exposure to that one. Arc G. Yeah, I really like this genomics theme. And I put on, these strikes are really weird for Arc G. So what did I put on? I put on, just looking at this chain for February 19th. Yeah, I got the 107 spot 21 by 109 spot 21 call spread. And I was able to get that on for, I believe it was like 95 cents. Um, so I actually, you know, pretty much like got it on. The risk reward is greater than one to one, which I like. And all I really need is for Arc G to make, in the grand scheme, like a small move higher over the next couple of weeks for this one, you know, to have a max profit. So again, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, well, let's see here. So I put on that Arc G trade. So as you can see, like I'm pretty bulled up. Like I'm not just saying I'm bulled up. Like that's how I chose to expose myself. Um. And then, so I did my Chewy, TTD was another really good one. And yeah, TTD, I ended up getting into, you can see it uh, poked above this monthly value area. So I was like, you know what, we're putting in this basing pattern right here. TTD had a really nice run and, you know, had a big correction. Now let's see if they can make a move to the upside. So I entered the 835 by 850 call spread for February 12th. So really short term time frame, you know, about 10 days. Um, shout out to Christian Fromhertz. He's the one that suggested this trade idea. Um, and I saw it and it was just, it looked really strong. So I was like, you know what? I'm I'm definitely going to take that trade. So yeah, I took this one. We'll see what happens with TTD. But yeah, that's another pretty short term uh, call spread. And then Amazon. So I played Amazon for earnings. And you can see here, what is Amazon doing? Yeah, so I sold a put spread in Amazon. In this trade, it's going to be, I'm sort of on the bubble in this trade. And by that, I just mean like it could go either way. So I was going into the Amazon print and I was like, you know what? I think they're going to have a good print. You know, they oftentimes surprise to the upside. Really strong company hasn't moved in months. So let me take a swing on the, you know, with a nice little call spread for the earnings release. So I sold the 3,400 put 
and I bought the 3,900 strike put. Um, or no, the 3,400, excuse me. And I paired that with a 3,990. So it's a $10 wide uh, put spread that I sold. And essentially I'm saying like, hey, I think Amazon is going to end up above um, 3,395 by February 5th, which is in a couple days. I ended up getting hit with such a big whammy <laughs> where I put on the trade and then I find out Jeff Bezos is stepping down uh, from the CEO position. He's still going to be on the board, I believe it said. But they knocked the earnings out of the park. The earnings were almost double the earnings estimate. Uh, but the stock's been kind of like all over the place in the after hours because you have you know, a really strong quarter. But then you have like, okay, the mastermind behind this whole operation is sort of like taking a backseat role. So I can definitely see why, like there's definitely gonna be a lot of people that just go, oh, Jeff Bezos is gone, I'm selling my Amazon. Or like, you know, just making it a smaller position. And you can see this one went all over the place in the after hours. So this is, yeah, I'm on the hourly chart. <clears throat> and you can see I was looking at it. Yeah, look at this candle. It all the way down to like 32.50. He was just gobbling that up. So we'll see what happens. Right now we're trading at 34.10. You know, if I can get out of this one for pretty much like a scratch or even make a couple bucks on it, you know, I'd be pretty happy about that. Just because that is such a curveball with Bezos leaving. So we'll see on that. And I believe that was it. <clears throat> yeah, that's about it for my trades for today. So that was a lot. Yeah, I really was going for it today. Let me see, I'm gonna pull up my cheddar flow over here. We'll take a quick look at some options order flow. Let's take a look, I'm just logging in here. I had to restart my machine. Oh yeah, the other thing. So I've been having such issues with my machine because I'm trying to run five monitors on it. Um, and now I'm having like painting issues because I don't think my graphics card is good enough to run all these. So I reached out to a really good friend of mine who I used to live with for about five years as a roommate. And she is going to sell me her um, gaming computer. She doesn't really game anymore. So there's going to be some relief on that end, which is awesome. That's just like a complete side tangent while I pull up my cheddar flow. But yeah, that way I notice even sometimes when I do these videos, when I have all these monitors plugged in, it's just super slow. So it'll be, you know, just a lot better. Let's see, I'm going to filter for orders a million dollars and up. And let's see what we got here. CCIV, let's go. So CCIV is a position that I took maybe like a week or two ago. So shout out to Trev. Trev was the one that actually pushed me over the edge on this one, which is really cool. I heard about it from a couple of different people. It was sort of on my radar. And, you know, Trev and I, we just ended up DMing each other. He brought up the company at, like, the perfect time. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take the position. Yeah, CCIV finished up, you know, about 27.5% on the day. It's just going parabolic at this point. This company is rumored to be acquiring Lucid Motors. And, you know, everybody is pretty much like, you know, with these EV plays, they just go bonkers over them. So I was like, you know what, even if this doesn't turn out to be Lucid Motors, you know, I'll gladly take a loss on the trade. But I just think there's so much upside if it does end up being Lucid Motors. So we'll see, I got into this one, I think around like 20-ish dollars, like on one of these candles, I forget which one. Yeah, I got in in the low 20s. So yeah, a nice little move here. And that one's going bullish. And like even the first article I see here is, don't buy CCIV stock now, but pounce on the Lucid Motors merger. I read this earlier. Pretty much they're saying like, don't invest in CCIV now because you don't know if it's going to be Lucid Motors. But as soon as you find out which uh, SPAC is acquiring Lucid Motors, buy that one. So for me, it's like, why, if I know everybody's going to just buy it up as soon as it's announced, why don't I just try to get in a little bit earlier if everyone keeps saying this is it? 
So we'll see if it if it doesn't end up being it, I'll I might end up taking a loss on the trade or you know just losing some of my gains at this point, and I'm comfortable with that. Sava, this one was a mover early on, ended up having a crazy day. I don't even know. I didn't really pay much attention to this one today. Cassava Sciences. Up 141%. And this one. Oh, after upbeat data on Alzheimer's treatment. That's awesome. Okay, I see there's a pretty high short float too. So yeah, this one, you know, betting on more upside in Sava. And they got the seven and a half strikes. And they got these, you know, around like lunchtime. Amazon, you know, see some call buyers going up for March. Let's see, we have the GME holdouts here, the diamond hands that are trying to continue to pump this one. Novovax. Let's see what that one did today, and Vax. That one has had like a really nice two-day run. Okay, yeah, put in like a, you know, consolidating a little bit, which it really needs to do. Yeah, because these stocks are tough when they just go parabolic. It's really tough to get an entry. A lot of times they do have to cool off a little bit. Okay, and then I see an AMD call buyer. AMD is a name that I do think has frustrated like so many bulls on the stock. So don't get me wrong, AMD has had an amazing run. Um, but yeah, at this point in time, you know, it's really just gone sideways for a couple of months. So yeah, AMD call buyer coming in. Then we have some index puts as well. So I see players coming in for April with some spy puts. I see they're coming into IWM. These were all towards the end of the day. Um, and let me see, this is actually a very interesting one, Hilton. Because a lot of these cyclical names have just gotten really taken to the woodshed. And today, some of them showed strength. Okay, Hilton. Yeah, it doesn't really look that interesting to me yet. I'm in Expedia, you know, via my leaps. And that one, you know, finally came back to life a little bit today. Yeah, you can see up almost 7%. Um, so looking really nice. I'm still holding on to my leaps. And let me see Neo. Yeah, Neo had some deliveries data the other day that in my opinion was kind of lackluster. It wasn't really, at least the reaction was kind of lackluster. I've seen Neo on deliveries data just go to the moon. This one, not really. So it's starting to look to me like Neo, of course it's a great company, but this one has just had such a stellar run. It's going to take a little bit more to really get this one to like much higher prices. So we'll see. I ended up closing down 2.14%. So that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all had a great trading day, and I will see you all tomorrow.